Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode 372. What's going on? Just trying to locate our dog. He's somewhere in here. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Today is going to be super fun because we get to recap uh, the race that we put on, uh, Tiger Claw. This last mm -hmm. weekend, Tiger Claw went off without a hitch. It was incredible, an amazing weekend. Uh, this was the second time we've been able to host this event. We are going to be joined tonight on our show by our two champions of Tiger Claw version 2.0. David and Megan Roach are on the show tonight, and we are so excited about it. So sit back, relax, everyone. The show begins now. Ginger Runner. Yay! What is up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 372. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy... Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Thank you for taking time out of your busy Tuesdays to, to spend a little bit of it with us tonight. As you can tell, my brain is a bit mushy. Is your brain a bit mushy? I am, as I mentioned before we went live, I'm firing on all, all cylinders. cylinders. There's today. one of them. All <laughs> cylinders. Uh, this last weekend, uh, we'll get to it throughout the show tonight, but I just wanted to make sure that we sort of up top recognize that this weekend was an amazing experience. We... Uh, our, our race directors of an event called Tiger Claw. That's what tonight's episode is going to be all about, is, is the race Tiger Claw. We'll, we'll recap it as best we can. But we also have some special guests tonight, our uh, male and female champions from Tiger Claw version 2.0. David and Megan Roach are going to be joining, joining us on the show, and we're very excited to have them. But I just wanted to recognize our incredible team that put this event on it, uh, it basically years in the making, we did our first version of Tiger Claw in 2019, obviously with the pandemic and everything that's happened over the last 18, 20 plus months. Um, we've had to cancel, postpone, and finally get uh, Tiger Claw back on the books this last weekend. All of our incredible volunteers, our friends Darren and Austin, uh, co-race directors, and they help out with so much uh, on the back end stuff that you'll could never- Could not do this race without not do it without two. them. Uh, Gretchen Walla, uh, Caitlin Gerben, Ellie Gerben, just just names that came out and did huge tasks this weekend to make this event happen. I want to start by saying thank you to all of our volunteers and everyone that helped make Tiger Claw happen. With that being said, we're going to get into it tonight. We're going to talk about how the race went, what is special about the race, and we're going to talk specifically to our two champions, David and Megan Roach. I can't wait. Uh, we are live, so if you have questions, Kim. Yeah, welcome if you're live, say hi in the chat room. Already a very active chat room, a lot of Tiger Claw runners, a lot of volunteers in the chat room tonight. Yeah. Um, so if you have questions for our wonderful guests, David and Megan, please ask them there. I think, um, uh, of course, I also have to thank, I, I realize now, yeah. uh, we like to recognize also the GR crew. It's the community that helps support us uh, well beyond um, uh, Tiger Claw and Ginger Runner Live. They are our, what we call our GR crew. They're our Patreon supporters. Uh, it is because of them that we're able to do this. It's because of them that we're able to do Tiger Claw, uh, this live show, our reviews, our films, everything. So a huge shout out to all of the crew, many of which were at Tiger Claw this weekend, yes. either running or volunteering and sacrificing their weekends to help people uh, accomplish our course. Two individuals in particular we like to shout out during Ginger Runner Live episodes, just they go above and beyond. Brian Sands, who was out there at Tiger Claw this weekend. Brian Sands is just such a wonderful member of this community, and we are so thankful for him and his support and just his overall inspiring uh, nature. People uh, look to Brian for inspiration. He truly is just a kind, kind human. Uh, and Rick Bjarnason. Rick Bjarnason is a British Columbian trail runner, ultra runner, and helped redesign the gingerrunner.com website. We're really thankful for Rick. And uh, he ran Tiger Claw in 2019. And he was I'm one of the few that came across the finish line and went, oh, yeah. Uh, that was pretty easy. fun. It was, easy. Like, it was easy. It was like a good training run. And we're like, what? Good <laughs> training run? That thing's a monster. I think later he's like, yeah, I might have, I might have like uh, shortchanged my reaction <laughs> at the finish line there. It was, a, it was a real beast of a race. So shout out to those gentlemen. We appreciate them very much. Without further ado, I would like to recognize our two guests on the show tonight. Uh, they are our dear friends. They are our coaches. They are also two individuals that made their trek out to the Pacific Northwest to run Tiger Claw, and they both won. And it's pretty <laughs> awesome. David and Megan Rook. Hey! hey. hey. Uh, thanks for <laughs> we, we like planned that a little bit, and but then I was like, shoot, I didn't do a countdown. So I was like, just start and hope she comes in after me. Uh, 
We are so happy to be on. Thank you so much for having us. Tiger Claw was the most fun we've ever had at a race, and we're going to be like the ultimate evangelists for it in the future. And all the work you did, even if we never knew who you were, we'd be like, that's the best race in the world. I was totally mind blown by the whole experience. I think we both debriefed at the, after the race and we're just telling everyone, we're like, there's this race, Tiger Claw. Even people who have no idea about trail running, we're like, this is this race, Tiger Claw. And it's amazing. It may have changed our lives. Also, it may have changed our quads right yeah. now. So you mentioned <laughs> Our quads right now are total mush. Yeah. David was just massaging me. I was like, actually, David, this is really awkward. He's like massaging my quads on camera. And I'm like, David, that looks weird on camera. It does not look like quads right now. I'm just needing, needing some dough down here. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Very quad dough. I mean, that's so cool. We're, we're getting a little yeah, bit of a little lag. Bit of break up there, I think. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of a break up there, but all. I think the important stuff was that there was quad massaging happening under the table, under the table, <laughs> which is weird because that's exactly what happens during Ginger Runner Live every single week <laughs> is there's quad massaging happening during every show. So I like how you purposely just had to show both your hands. Uh, well, I had one under the table. And I was like, <laughs> OK, l listen, we I massage my own quads. Let's, let's be honest. Um, we need a we need a, com a computer attachment that just goes under the table and massages at the same rate. <laughs> to get the full immersive VR experience with Megan and David Roach. It, man, my brain. I think that's called something else. Yeah, I think that exists. <laughs> There's probably a website for that, David. I'm happy to, I'm happy to send you the link. I have, it, I have it in my spam, but. I'm gonna have to have a conversation with a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, massage quads. There it is. Um, <laughs> We we appreciate the kind words uh, because you're, you know, when we set out to create this race, we set out to create a very, very unique challenge, like physical, but also mental, because the race itself is sort of unique in that it's a choose your own adventure. And one thing that we're really curious about uh, when we stand at the finish line, we see runners come, come across, um, the race itself has four loops this year. And you can choose the order in the loops you do them. And it really adds this cool dynamic. So I'm curious, from a, from an elite standpoint, who you have run countless races where you see the field in front of you, behind you, you're either chasing or being chased. Here, you don't really have that. So I'm curious how that dynamic is either good or negative for an elite front runner, because we, we can get both sides of the coin there. So I'm curious if you guys want to talk a bit about that. I'm curious. We actually just talked about this on our podcast. I am in love with this format. I feel like they should kind of like take over trail running, not to like spread. I, I feel like Tiger Claw needs to be unique, but it was awesome. I think I love the idea of like solo running, but I think what was really cool was that you had this like time solo running through the forest, just like traversing and being in the awesome Pacific Northwest trails. And then you would come across like up to the cold to tiger or however, whoever you say that. And there was just like, <laughs> volunteers that were awesome out there and so I feel like it was like the juxtaposition between like running solo out there on the trails and then it made it even more special to go out and see the community members and the, the GRL community who was out there cheering you on and I felt like I was just looking forward to that as I was out there running and I, I just felt like it was yeah so cool. and you still got to see a ton of people and get mm -hmm. that love and that support but it didn't lead to stratification like I think one problem at races is like often we don't get to see the full race right unfold around us like from the first finisher to the last finisher, you know, and sure. we get to see that out there. Like we're, I mean, at times you're probably seeing people that might've been the very last finisher, someone that only that maybe did one loop or something. And they're celebrated just as much, um, in the context of the race. And that to me is really uplifting because it takes me out of my own head of thinking about how I'm racing or anything like that. And at the end of the day, like racing, no matter where you're at, it's just you and the trail, like there is no drafting, like in cycling. So, um, to me that I, I, added so much to my experience during the race where it was just purely fun and then getting to the finish line and be like, oh that's a sweet bonus i'll take it um, <laughs> amazing back there um but other than that like i think everyone got to experience the same type of race and that to me is the most beautiful thing in what you're running is all about we we without a doubt got uh, one specific comment at the uh, finish line from most most of our runners and that was there was this guy out there, I think it was David, and he ran past me faster than anyone else ran past me. But the whole time he's like, you are amazing. You are great. This was great. You're so great. Like you were out there providing so much support for the other runners 
throughout the entire day. Like that was one of the one of the number one comments was that our front runners were supporting the mid and back of the Packers and how cool that was to be passed because it wasn't just a oh man I'm getting my ass kicked. It was mm-hmm. a that guy just supported me. I feel good. I'm going to push harder. You know, that's a really cool thing. Thank you, David. Well, I was massaging legs, trying to like, oh, no. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think that it really underscores what's about churning altogether is that we're in this together. Like um, it's what makes churning so special is us and the trail and um, as a group. And I think that the race emphasized that to the max. And for me, it was like, my favorite experience ever in the middle of a race, even going up the steep climbs or anything like that, or even going more like going down the descents. I wasn't fully feeling at the moment um, because every single time this is an opportunity for love and joy and all those things. Uh, this was, um, yeah. So yeah, go ahead. should we switch over? Should we switch over really quickly to try a slightly different hotspot internet connection? Yeah, we can totally do that. Uh, if you want to switch over, if you think it's going to be stronger, that'll work. I think it's, I think it's worth a try. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna like kill very some quickly. Ta- you can kill some time here. Yeah, we're gonna um, talk like. Um, Should we David just massage, massage each other's quads? Couch? We're gonna massage each other's quads. You guys get that internet uh, swapped out. Yeah, it seriously won't. Uh, I know it won't take long, but just let us know when you guys are back in, and and we'll we'll make it happen. Um, um, maybe I, this is a great opportunity to kind of uh, talk about. Oh, I think they're back. That did oh. not. That did not take long. Can you guys hear us? <laughs> yeah, that's oh. great. One hundred percent. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that was the. Uh, I'll need to grab a charger though. In our tech yes. wizardry, yes. Charger out. <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what I was going to say. Obviously, that took three yeah, seconds. Uh, so that was amazing. It's a great opportunity to talk about. Never mind. They're back. <laughs> Uh, but Kim was about to say something. Kim, what were you going to say? It's a good time to recognize. Oh, it's a good time to recognize our top three male and female since we, we're, we've we already introduced our champions. Yes, please. Um, To talk about our top three uh, female and male runners. So for the female side, we, of course, had Megan Roach just being in first place. Third and overall. our wonderful friend Maria Dalzot in second, who is our reigning second place champion from the previous Tiger Claw She's as well. She's got second on lock. Uh, we are very excited to see Maria come back and race even after like the crazy last six weeks, eight weeks that she's had. Yep. Uh, and then Julie Fetner was our third place uh, woman. And on the men's side, wonderful David Roach snagging first place. Tyler Cox came in how many seconds after David? And we can talk about 70- this. We'll talk about this in a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this in a second, but 79 seconds. And it's a very unique thing, yeah. uh, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, and then Nick McGowan. Uh, for third place and I think Nick was also surprised I think he was <laughs> Nick was sort of like I'm I'm third place we're like yeah Nick you got third he's like I don't think this I've ever it gotten third. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this is even better uh so it was it was an amazing podium congratulations to those six individuals they all get price uh uh cash prizes which is also really cool but one thing I sort of wanted to talk about uh David and Megan um let's sort of start here Specifically with you, Megan, this is the first time you've raced in a while, uh, specifically at this distance and and that sort of thing. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, as much as you're willing to talk about, but I'm really curious what it was like to tow the start line again uh, and and what that journey was like for you to get back to a start line, especially of a hard, difficult race. You know, this wasn't an easy one. Yeah, we actually just talked about this on our podcast where I was, so we did a shakeout on Friday and it turned into like a two hour shakeout on the course. (laughs) We had no idea where we were going. And it was actually very eye opening about like the terrain and the trails that we were covering. And I think on Friday, the day before the race, I had this little existential moment of thinking about just how much 7,500 feet of vert is. And so I got to that starting line, just really thinking about embracing the idea of an adventure and celebration. And I think leaning into the idea of love and it was so helpful out there to have like the ginger runner community. Like we talked to you guys at the start line that we saw so many Brian Sands was there at registration. And I think like leaning into the love and the community element of the day helped me get past the idea that my body has not been through something like this in many years. And so like 
leaning on that love, but then also going to the race too, knowing I actually brought, I packed a book and <laughs> a, um, a computer just in case I had to DNF, but understanding too, that like, if my body wasn't capable of handling it, that I was going to give my body the same love, um, too. And that's something that I think I've just like really worked on in this journey is extending my own self that love, because it's so easy for me to give it to others, but mm. it's challenging for me to give it to myself. And so I just was empowered showing up to the start line with that mentality because that to me felt like a win by itself without even having, you know, run a mile of the race. That's amazing. Yeah. The day before the race, she asked me, um, do you think I can do this? And I was like, mm-hmm. let's go get your point. It was and very interesting. No, it was exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean is like, try, I, you know, we're always, we try to be a hundred percent honest with each other about that stuff, not never blow smoke up someone's ass. And like, I wasn't sure either, you know, even as someone that believes in her so much and has told her forever that she's going to be better than she's ever been. It's like, well, I don't know if that's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> um, fortunately, Chipotle solved a lot of those problems. <laughs> I'm so glad we have a Chipotle in Issaquah near the start line. Um, and I'm also glad that that didn't cause an issue. Um, <laughs> it is... Uh, uh, there were there were some issues <laughs> I actually we had a reflection like, I think we eat too many Chipotle chips which were like covered in oil for some reason so we're big fans of like the night before race great time for a calorie bomb so much fun um, we usually don't do Chipotle um, we usually don't order Chipotle chips in particular um, and so when we get to the bottom of the bag of you know we also eat like a whole thing like a whole burrito and then we get to the bottom of the bag we're like these are like kind of wet and soggy. What is that all about? I'm like, oh, that's probably like a different like calorie ratio than we're usually used to. Um, so we had some fun experiences in, on loop one, but then we were good. I'm glad. On loop one. <laughs> on loop like one. The green loop. The green loop, like the the loop that's in the dark. And uh, good. I'm glad everything was okay. Oh, I I thought it was the brown loop. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> I guess we should go. Actually, we should avoid sweeping that one. That's the person having two people. Is I feel like we both had a similar experience. Granted, I kept I kept all mine in, which is great. <laughs> but we both had a similar experience. But like, it must be the chips. Yeah, it no. must be the chips. <laughs> we'll let we'll give them a call. We'll let them know. Hey, listen. More oil. Next more time. oil next time. <laughs> um. So th- I mean it it. it it's new to put on a race director hat for us because we, you know, we've done it with with virtual events and we've we've created events online and and through our community, through uh, uh, like our global community and stuff like that for years now. So that's nothing new. But what has been new is is the in person events. Tiger Cloud nineteen was our first in person um, running event. This was our second essentially version of it. There is something really special about seeing your friends at the start line of your event. And there's this pride of, you know, these friends chose to. They trusted us they enough. They trusted us yeah. enough to show up and, and and take part in our event. Even more so compounded by the fact that, Megan, I know that you have had a number of years where just getting back and grinding back. It meant just that much more to see you choose Tiger Claw as sort of the experiment, as sort of the choice of like, let's see what what my body can do today and to see what ended up happening where you absolutely crushed the course uh was incredibly inspiring and i'm curious throughout that race did you have moments of uh, like self-reflection and joy and and pride like were you able to give yourself that love because you were doing what i can only imagine you you dreamt of doing a hundred percent. Well, I think to start this though, I would trust both of you to be my surgeons at this point. <laughs> like the way that you- Are you sure? <laughs> the way that you executed that trail race was beyond anything I've ever seen any race director do. I mean, that course was pretty complicated in terms of logistics and everything was labeled like every hundred feet. It was incredible. I was yeah. like, you always knew where you were on the trail at all times. And so I would trust you both with anything after seeing how you pulled off that race. But I think for me, it was wildly special to be out there, to be honest with you. I think there were several moments where I was out running and I was just getting goosebumps and chills thinking about like being able to actively cover this course and do this and just feeling like a part of the community. So I think like for the longest time, I felt like I was supporting the community when I was going through like some of my autoimmune stuff and some of my hamstring stuff and being able to feel a part of it and part of 
um, like the ginger runner crew and part of it all out there was so special. I think, I mean, I think on Yellow Loop when I was having like an existential crisis because it was hard, I was also almost crying with joy at the same time. <laughs> and it was so cool to have those parallel emotions. So thank you both for that. I mean, it was just such an incredible experience. Yeah, actually something that Ethan heard me say um, that I'll never live down because uh, people relate it to Megan after is, so Ethan got on the on the mic or whatever. I was like, oh, first female finisher is coming in. Megan's coming in. And I was like, oh, so you mean she's at top the top of the mountain? And I was like, no, no. She, and then you're like, no, she's like 100 yards away. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I underestimated Megan, <laughs> which I will never, ever do again. Because, you know, I've told Megan for years, it's like, you know, when she asked, will I ever be the same athlete again? I'm like, not only will you be, you'll be better than ever. Like, you are going there. Um, but Tiger Claw was so fascinating. It's such a joy and honor to get to see you go through that process because it was the it was the moment where she's like, okay, here's my hand, putting it on the table, and like, what do you got? And to see how she responded, both emotionally and physically, in that moment, like, and, you know, I'm getting chills thinking about it now because um, I can't imagine what it was like out there for you going up those hills and then bombing down them and being better than ever. Yeah, actually, it really hit me on four, but descent number four, and I was like, I got this. Because I yeah. think descent number one, two, and three, I was like, what's coming ahead? Right. And descent four was really special. And like, yeah. But I think kudos to you. I think the idea of a loop course is actually really beautiful because I wasn't thinking in terms of miles out there as I was running. Like so often the Garmin will bang in a race and you're like, I'm at mile 17 of mile 31. And I really liked mentally being able to grasp onto the loops because it made it so tangible where it was like, I'm on loop two of loop four. And it was such a fun and different and unique way to think about a race. And it's something that I actually want to channel for future racing. It's, I mean, honestly, it's purposeful. Um, the race stems a lot from my, uh, and Kim's dealing with anxiety and creating a course that allows you to not worry about anxiety, not being super remote in deep woods and not knowing if you're gonna be able to make it to the next aid station or that sort of thing. We purposefully designed a course that through the idea of loops creates something extremely tangible without thinking of a big picture because it's so it's so big, uh, 7,500 feet again in this year's race, 85 to 9,000 feet of our, in our typical course, is such a big number that it's hard to even look at and go, well, what does that mean for like pacing? Like, how do I pace that type of gain? And how do I do that? Whereas a loop, you're like, I just need to tackle yellow loop. And I know yellow loop is this length. I know pink loop is this length. And you sort of chop it up and then your brain can process it. And, you know, the goal with the race was to create something that was extremely challenging, but anybody could tackle it because it chopped it up in their brain automatically. Um, and that's what we've seen with all yeah. of our finishing results is that people are crossing that line who didn't believe they could do it. Cause like, I've never done anything longer than mm -hmm. 15 miles or whatever, but the chopping it up into smaller bits was like a default in their brain. I do want to, uh, before we start diving into the specifics of the race, I do want to get to some live questions. We have a, a bunch of live questions. I don't want to uh, ignore those. Kim, what do we got? Uh, yeah. Question from Brian F and Brian F was out there with the lobster head on all day just doing like all sorts of stuff for us like all day long. He, he wore multiple hats they just were all the same they lobster. were just all the same lobster. <laughs> uh brian asked um what planning went into the order of loops yeah. and so there's a lot of a lot of questions about what was the planning like and then i'm going to ask a follow-up question from deb runs far who also was out there volunteering and she asked <laughs> did you both intentionally run different routes great question great question so I obviously am a, much more of a planner sometimes. Like I plan ahead. So I knew I knew what I was doing. Um, Megan, did you have any idea what order of loops you were doing? I had a general context of what I wanted to do getting into the day. And then I totally mixed it up as soon as I started racing, which was unplanned. And I loved it. I feel like this is very much how you approach grocery shopping. Like you yeah. walk into the grocery store and there'll be like five classes. <laughs> And I'll stand there and do like mental calculus and all of them. I'll just like grab one and, and go on. And so it very much suits our personalities. But it was, I really like the idea of like picking an order and having a strategy going in. Yeah. And so our strategy though, ended up overlapping a lot, which is steep to gradual, like as steep as we could get as early as we could get. And then going on because our thinking is like the, the gaps that you're going to get on the steep stuff can become pretty massive because especially if we can run some of the steep stuff um, or run all of it then you know that could be like three or four minutes per mile so we can gain 
you know, five minutes in that time. And that really ended up being important for me in particular. For Megan, I think it would have been great no matter what. Um, though perhaps you would have cramped or something. But for me, it's like, well, you know, in the first two loops, I gained almost 10 minutes. Um, and then, or like a little less than that. And then, you know, when I like made some, some mistakes at the end, um, there was enough of a buffer uh, from the steep stuff that if I had made those same mistakes and then gone to the steep stuff, I'd have been rolling back down the hill, just like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and to contextualize too. So in the race, I wound up going white, orange, pink, yellow. And going into the race, my plan was to go white, pink, yellow, orange and mm -hmm. bookend the two steep parts. But what happened actually was I got out there and realized that I was running. I ran, I wound up running all of white and I felt pretty empowered by doing that. It felt good. And as I saw white, I was like, I might cramp on orange. And I also felt like I could run orange. And so I called an audible and went white, orange, pink, yellow. And I actually loved that structure. I think getting back to the mental approach too, checking off two loops was very cool doing that. So like doing the two shortest loops, it felt like a big mental gain. So I actually heard a lot of the women did yellow and pink first. So I had done two loops by the time the second woman had finished one loop, pink and yellow. And that was because pink and yellow were longer, but it was a big mental boost knowing that I had already checked off too. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty shocked in retrospect that so many of the runners over time have gone yellow or like the more, gra like they, we, they say gradual. Thing was not gradual. Thing was straight up, um, <laughs> but more, more gradual, like more uh, slightly less r ridiculously steep in a loving way. Um, I'm I'm shocked that that's the one that people choose first often um, because like the the variation, the accordion effect, I think will be extremely prevalent, especially for top runners on the steep stuff versus on the more gradual stuff. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if it'll be a new strategy for other people or um, if it's just kind of like what works for us because we like to run a lot of steeps. Yeah, to put it into perspective from year one, so we don't have all the same stats from this year because we had a different timing system, but from year one, yellow was by far uh, the most popular choice for loop one. And it was significantly wow. longer in 2019 <laughs> then because pink was new this year, a little bit longer. Uh, and so, uh, in 2019, yellow was by far the longest. Yeah. And I think people wanted to get it out cause it's the most mentally taxing, uh, the way it, it was longer than it was this year too. Like it yeah. climbs more and, and does a whole bunch of additional ridge lines. So I think the mentality would... was get it out of the way. Cause it's long. And then you're like a third of the way done. I like, uh, slight aside, I would die for the pink loop. What a cool that trail. That was a cool trail. Uh, it actually, so I was a little bit uncertain. Like pink and yellow were very equivalent to me in terms of like physical stress, I thought. Um, so as I was running out to that junction, I saw Kim. And I said, Kim, pink or yellow? And she's like, oh, pink. Like, you know, it's my favorite trip. And I'm like, oh, great. That's all of everything. And fortunately, I got to really enjoy it because I was still like on the human side of human versus like zombie man um, at that point. And it was one of the more special running experiences I've ever had. Being back in those trees, occasionally seeing another racer, and it was just, like so amazing and lifting us up. Um, and just like it was mad. And then crossing the bridge. Oh my God. Like I'll always remember that. It was so gorgeous. Gordon, I had an existential moment because I was telling, I passed a racer and I was like, great job. You're doing awesome. And ran square into a tree. <laughs> and it was like, I went flying, like handheld went everywhere. So I had like a little existential moment on pink, but I thought it was beautiful. She just, she's actually uh, contributing to the logging operation. <laughs> yeah. tree just straight down. It's like, uh, we don't want to mess with Megan. We're going to just fall over. Yeah. I actually did go and do the pink loop on Sunday just to double check that everything was cleared. And I kept thinking, I wonder if this was a tree that Megan hit. Was this a tree that Megan hit? Where's their bark missing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's interesting to kind of hear your guys' perspective in regards to the loop, because I think it was, it was different for a lot of people. Uh, but uh, so we know a bunch of mid packer, uh, friends that were running it, that did the same thing. They're like, we want to get orange loop out of the way for those unfamiliar orange loop is this trail called cable line. It's notorious because it's super steep. It's about 1500 feet of gain and just under a mile. Um, and then white loop, which is very similar, uh, a little bit more, a little less technical. And it sort of gradually gets to that steep section. So a lot of people in the mid pack did those two first. Cause they're like. I think the mental taxation of doing steep, they wanted to get out of the way because they knew they could do long and runnable. But what we heard at the end was that they did it 
in their own mind wrong. Like they wish they had done this one earlier because it was longer and more the mentally longer. taxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and rather than uh, and then save the, <clears throat> the short steep stuff for later. So it was really interesting to hear that perspective. Some of the differences between 19 and 21 here. 2019, we had three loops. So there's six iterations of how you could run the race, right? You could do yellow, white, uh, pink, pink, white, yellow. You know, there's six different versions. With an at, with a fourth added loop, that's 24 versions of the race that you could have chosen to run, which is this, like, that compounded exponent is fascinating to see the differences. What this came down to as a uh, race director or spectator that was there is seeing David come in for his uh, finishing his third loop and going out on his fourth loop. Being able to see the time uh, that he comes in and being able to know exactly the route that he's going up. So, David, you ended with yellow, right? You were going up yellow last? Yes. Which has uh, like a two-mile section of runnable technical single track. Along the top. Along the top. It appears flat on paper. (laughs) Yeah, on on a GPS file. It's like, hey, pancake flat. It's not. Uh, And then our second place male, Tyler Cox, coming in and saving orange loop for his final loop which is one and a half miles up the shortest. It's the shortest and steepest. Neither of you knew the, or I'm assuming you didn't know the order that Tyler was running. Were you even able to determine that at all out there? Like order? I I had, I had no concept. I, so what I, I mean, for me, it's really a good reflection on racing and trail running more generally. It's like, well, I knew how I was running that I was going to be in a good place going into the old loop. Ethan saw me there. Uh, Ethan saw me make a joke to him that almost like probably wrecked me. So uh, Ethan was, at, you you have a camera of this, I'm sure, um, where, he, so he was running running with me and um, there's an inside joke we have with athletes we coach, which is whenever whenever something's going well or you, you're like finishing a race or something, you yell in your head, strides, mother effer. Um, <laughs> so I am like, Ethan, you ready for this? And then I yelled it and did a stride. And uh, I was in a really productive, good place there at end of lap three. And then going on on lap four, I was like, I'm in a good spot. This is going great. And then it went south pretty badly for me on lap four in terms of like the usual stuff. And then I was like, well, there's a number of people in this race that are great runners. And if they beat me on this, good for them. Um, I'm going to keep fighting to the finish and do what I can on that section that you talked about, the two mile section in particular. But um, I had no idea where I was. So then when I got to the top of the last aid station, I kind of assumed that someone might have, uh, you know, with the good runners that were in the race, come through first. Um, so I, if if they had, I was just going to keep going and and just be like, I don't care if I cramp now because I'm going to go for it. Um, but once I heard that they hadn't, I went up there. I un, un, There were rock tame caps, like the salt caps. I undid two of them took eight caps um, <laughs> and down, down water and then ran down. I was like, Ethan, what? That's yeah. so dangerous. <laughs> the, doctor the prescription is like me. one cap per hour. And David's like, I'm good. Eight. Let's do eight. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had uh, neglected to, to keep that up. And so it got me to the finish. And then as Ethan saw, immediately cramps um, <laughs> at the finish. So um, no, I, I loved that dynamic. To me, it was like, you know you're racing people, um, but really you're racing, you know, the whole idea of this trail and this event, and that's kind of what I want racing to always be. If someone had been with me, I might have not won. I might have fallen back because in my head I'd be like, oh, well, I'm not enough right now. I'm not doing great. And, it, and out there I was like, well, I just got to finish the yellow loop. I, that's all I got to do. It's really cool to now know the results. Tyler Cox came in 79 <laughs> seconds after David Roach which if you're unfamiliar with the trail is a, is a single switchback on that final descent. Basically the, they must not have seen each other because they were one switchback ahead. It's their long switchbacks, uh, about 79 seconds if you're going at <laughs> five minute mile pace. So it's incredible how close they were without knowing it. So it wasn't like, like we knew that it was going to be close at the finish line. So it was really exciting for us. Yeah. We knew 20 <laughs> minutes ahead of time. Like we knew the second Tyler went out on his orange loop. Uh, we were like, we're like oh, oh shit. <laughs> one of them is going to get to that top eight station first. And then that whoever gets their second will probably hear that. Oh, this other person just came through and the race was on. Uh, so it's a testament to your stick to you know, you just got to get yellow loop done and you just got to get through it as fast as you can. 
uh, that you were able to to close so fast. And again, a shout out to Tyler too, because that was amazing what he was able to put down on the orange loop, not knowing where he was and still just pushing up the steepest yeah. climb of the day to try to position himself well. Um, it was an amazing race as a spectator and viewer to, to witness. And it proved to me that like we have to have dots online that people can watch because that is the best way to see David go up yellow and Tyler go up orange and like where the dots cross or chase. Like, we got to figure out a way, way to make that happen. Well, yeah, if, I, if Tyler sees this, I just want to say what a beast. Um, also, I do wish he caught me so that like <laughs> Ethan on your, on your motion stabilizing camera, we could have live visual evidence of someone's legs actually falling off when they try to sprint. Like my entire body <laughs> would have like just become a skeleton. Uh, and it would have been terrible. Um, also, if there, if there were dots, my dot on yellow would have just been like a, a skull and crossbones going <laughs> along that little ridge. There were some people, there were some people that um, the other racers that saw me up there and they were so kind to me, but they were like clearly a little bit worried. <laughs> actually, that yellow ridge is not easy. Oh no, no, that's no. actually one of the big parts I saved yellow for last is because that like two mile stretch on railroad grade, I realized was gonna be pretty slow given it's more technical than it looks. There were so many times when I was like falling off the side of the trail yeah. and I feel like it's not, I mean, to your credit, it's really not easy to run fast there. Uh, yeah, skull and crossbones. <laughs> I like the idea of a, of a racer having three buttons to choose from, like a smiley face, a flat face, and then skull and crossbones <laughs> while they're running, like how you feel in that moment. So Megan, for well, you, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I always think about the like the I run far race coverage. I was where, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Where they're like, they say at the aid station how someone feels, and they're like, oh, this person looks good. Oh, this person's looked better, or whatever, to like tell you how the race is going. I'm always like, David Roach is contemplating the meaning of existence and whether it's worth it to <laughs> continue with <laughs> this universe. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs his belt. Um. Uh, Megan, with the women's race, we it was a pretty stacked field. We had a lot of like local fasties, legends in the sport, uh, people Chris, who like know the trails, people like who know the Chrissy, trails. Chrissy Maria, Mail, for example, Julie. you know, has a lot yeah. of history up here in the Northwest racing and at race directing. For you, uh, this was your first Pacific Northwest trail run, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. like first time touching these trails. For, uh, how was it for, from a competitive standpoint? Uh, did you have any idea throughout the day? where people were other competition did you keep like did you consciously keep an eye or listen for updates or was it just you out there getting done what you needed to get done for yourself personally well i went to this race like pretty fired up i've had like three years of competitive energy like all channeled <laughs> into this race so i went out pretty hard i actually david and i were like together for like 400 meters of this race and i was like one of us is doing something very wrong right now like we should not be running together for this long at the start of the race and so i actually went out pretty fast at the race i don't know i think i probably had you guys probably know like a 90 second or like two minute lead at mile four uh, maybe 90 like 69 seconds i'm not sure so i was pretty confident like based off of how i was feeling at mile four i was excited but maria delza is one heck of a competitor she is so kind i raced with her over the years and so like as I was going out there on the course I was just channeling Maria and like thinking about her in my head and I was like you need to throw down relentless forward progress because Maria is coming um but I think actually I saw it was really helpful because I knew most of the women did pink and yellow and I had done white and orange and so I was on my second loop when they were on their first and that was really confidence building um even though I don't think I quite fully contextualized just how long pink and yellow were yeah yeah for sure I did, I did send Chrissy up orange for her first loop because I was like, no women have got that hundred bucks up there. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, we also did. Uh, so I don't know where she went on. I don't know what loop two after. was for her. I don't, I don't know yeah. either, but I do. We did offer uh, first to the top of each loop, male and female, a hundred dollar bonus prize. And that was really cool because, you know, David and Megan, you guys chose your steep routes first. You got to the top first, so there's that hundred dollar bonus, but there isn't time to like come down and go back up to try to collect more. So there's eight opportunities there for cash, and and it was really cool to see people make that decision of, you know, where did the leaders go? Oh, I'm going a different way. Like change their day so they could get yeah. a little bonus. And I had I had a guy that was probably running in the top 
six or eight on his first loop asked me like have any men gone up this loop or this loop and i was like yeah actually like and he's like oh i'm gonna i better go try the other one to see if i can get the hundred bucks and i think the <laughs> top male to the top of white uh megan you may you might have passed him uh or he was chasing you or something and he was working so hard because he's like megan's ahead of me is that is the prize for two people like male and female and they're like yeah you also get it he's like oh yes <laughs> and i don't know if he, I don't know if he held on for the rest of the race, but he got his $100 uh, perk. We do have some live questions for you guys. Let's get to some of those. Uh, yeah, a question from Ingen in the chat room. Ingen was volunteering at our lower aid station. What's up, Ingen? Uh, Ian asked a question for the Roaches. If, if an athlete doesn't stand a chance in hell of moving fast on the steeper routes, would you still recommend doing those first? Mm. Um, well, first, Ingen is amazing and the best. And we love, we had many conversations about how awesome she is. A bright shining guys. light yeah. out there. Um, but in terms of that, I actually told every athlete we had racing to, and that I, when I was like, they were totally uncertain. I was thinking, well, go steep to shallow. Um, and my thinking there is that even when they feel like they're not going that fast, you might be talking about a mile per hour difference um, or two, like, and that adds up like by to a few minutes over the course of that climb. Um, and meanwhile, on the other climbs, I don't know how much it adds actually adds up. That being said, probably there's someone out there with a mathematical equation that's going to like dunk on me right there. Um, <laughs> and you know, with the elite, with the elite athlete, we have racing, uh, we're, with a couple of them with Alex and Chrissy, I didn't give any advice at all because I was like, I actually don't know. And I try to be careful about stepping into things I don't know about. I think you could do that math equation on Strava, and I think I would love to try. Yes, yes I think it would be really cool to that is <laughs> actually on Strava. It's like you can see all the Strava data. This, they're, the loops themselves are actually on Strava, and so like it would be really cool to break it down. You could probably actually do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, I'll get back to you. I, I also just think like steep is always an opportunity if you have legs, and like um, if you can view it that way in training, like it's almost as if. The, the mental approach is as important as whatever the physical outcomes are. Um, that, that set the tone for the rest of the day that like, for me starting on orange or for Megan going up that steep part of white, everything else was like, okay, I am taking it to this race. I'm not letting this race dictate what I am going to do out there. Um, that I am the one that is, I am the straw stirring the drink. I am not the drink getting stirred. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, just a, a shout out to you, David, as well. David came through eight, the lower aid station first. So after the, the green loop, the warm up loop, David was the first through. And that was at 7.32 a.m. Uh, we figured it would take our lead pack about 30 minutes to get to that lower aid station on the first green loop. It took David 32 minutes, which is right on the money. Um, and then it took him until 7.49 a.m. to reach the top of orange loop cable line. That is 17 minutes on one of the hardest sections of trail on tiger mountain and i don't know how to comprehend that or i barely get through the parking lot in 17 yeah minutes. <laughs> like 17 minutes from parking lot end to parking lot end is like a typical time for people um it just is uh mind, mind warping yeah, yeah like i don't i don't i wish i could have seen it we have some of it on video I oh think. you couldn't keep up i couldn't keep up uh maybe, maybe we do maybe we don't but I just wish I had watched that because it, it must have been just like watching a, a mountain goat literally run up the steepest freaking monster trail ever. So good job, hey, well, Davis. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, Darren was out there actually. So he got to, he was, he saw me uh, um, up that. But I think the real key here is you just eat a lot of Chipotle. Like a <laughs> lot. Of, and and then, a lot of caffeine gels. And then time it so that like, the aftershock farts just like <laughs> all the way up. You know. um, That's what the smell was coming through the aid station. Out. That's gross. I don't like your poop jokes. <laughs> I've said like, all your jokes except for the fart jokes. I'm like, eh, I don't know about those. Oh, that sounds, sounds, uh, I feel like I've heard that. That's a pretty like, familiar oh, conversation yeah. in this household. Uh, my fart jokes just tend to be farts. And I, I laugh at them. <laughs> and I don't think Kim is on uh, the same page as nope. me. Uh, you did just mention timing and how long people were taking. The Tiger Claw team, there was four of us, the two of us, Austin, Darren. We had a little spreadsheet of uh, when we thought the first finisher would finish in. I chose three hours and 57 minutes. And before the race, I did see David. And uh, 
I, I can't remember if you asked me or if I told you, but I was like, oh, I think you, I think you'll go under four. I said 357. Here I'm I predicted 402. I just didn't have as much faith, I think. Uh, <laughs> I thought we designed a course that was tough, that, that it would be impossible to break four hours. We just got to make it tougher is, uh, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> No. I do. I, no. I do take. I do take a little pride in seeing both David and Megan at the finish line. Well, Megan was in great shape at the finish line. David, I think we broke David. I think we wrapped him up like a baked potato. Yeah, there was a there was a baked potato foil wrapper that we put David in for a while. Megan was great. Like Megan was jumping on the unicorn statue <laughs> and like having fun. So Megan, that is a testament to your training. You are strong. Uh, David is not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was. It, I there was a sense of pride. David was making these like guttural noises and you like, couldn't help. You were so embarrassed about them. And then like, it would all, it would just go silent yeah. as you were making these noises. And you're like, oh, oh. So I, I was trying to be like, you know, super loving and stuff. And then occasionally like, everyone's had this experience where something is like just cramping and, you know, you make a noise. And then at, someone just after I, I had gone through my, um, you know, I got a terrible wildebeest noises. Someone over in the corner was like, not sure what we should say about this right now. Um, but also, on I was thinking about Kim's prediction a lot because I finished the third loop and I was like, you know, well, so before the race, I, I think I told you like uh, 410, 415, I thought, or something like that. Um, and then I was like, oh man, she believes in me. This is so cool. Or believes in someone in the race. Um, and I, uh, as I'm going out on the fourth loop, I'm like, I think I'm like 350 or below right now in terms of it if this loop plays out like I think it should. And then as I started like going through my dark forest out there, I was like, that sorceress. <laughs> but it ends well, because then I was like, well, Kim's wrong. This is going to be at least 415, like I predicted. And then I'm like, perhaps this entire time, she was actually giving me strength I didn't know I had to overcome this. <laughs> And so then it ended up being, what was that, like 358 high 358, or yeah. Oh. That was quite, that's quite the roller coaster. <laughs> we'll just get you a hat next year that says Sorceress. Yeah. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, Oscar Dominguez in the chat for the super chat. We appreciate that. Thank you very much, Oscar. And his comment is hashtag Mountain, mountain Goat. goat. Uh, mountain, the roaches are, in fact, mountain goats. And... Um, before we sort of wrap up the main show here, uh, I do want to, I, I just want to commend you both on your uh, achievement, your incredible runs this weekend. It was really special to watch and to witness, but even more so, we, I know we've had David on a number of shows. Megan, we've had you on a number of shows as well. I cannot say this enough. As far as um, uh, people in the sport who we look up to and admire and who who are fantastic role models to the next generation of trail runners or to those who uh, are just outside of the lead pack uh, in the mid or the back of the pack. Like you two are such beacons of light and I, I don't want to come across as um, insincere. I am just so thankful for you two in our sport and for everything that you do because you truly do without exaggeration, lift others up above yourselves. And watching you race this weekend was uh, an honor that you would choose Tiger Claw, uh, yeah. that you would trust Kim and I. Um, but what you did for everyone else out there was incredible. So we are so <laughs> gracious for you. Um, we're so thankful for you. And if there's anything we can ever do to help support you further in your guys' journey and with Swap and anything, please don't hesitate to let us know. It, it was really cool. It was an honor really to have cool. you guys come race or run a race. Oh, yeah. That means that means the world. And actually, so we were driving away from Tiger Claw and we had this discussion about the both of you. And we were like, it's so cool what you've done in terms of community building to be able to put on a race like this where everyone out there feels like family. Like people we may have just communicated with online or people that we may have seen once. It's like this amazing ginger runner family coming together. And we're like, that's the coolest job in the world. Like what you two do is so, so cool and so amazing and so special. And to be a part of that, we're like, wow, this is like a big honor. So yeah, yeah. We, we love you too so much. But you know, for those listening to God, we love you all. I mean, I know that a lot of people listening were probably there. And it was so special to share that moment, those moments with you out there. Um, and we're so proud of you, whether you're uh, volunteering or out there racing, had a great day or had your worst day of your life or DNF or anything in between. 
Um, but even those that didn't, it's like the same spirit that like we all share was embodied in this one experience. And so I encourage you to, to get to this race in the future. Um, we're going to be there every year until we're 90 years old, um, at least. Uh, I don't know if our 89 year old quads are going to handle that. Uh, we're going to be volunteering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Heads up, but before we move on past that, there is a man out there. His name is Alan. He is a local resident that hikes up and down West Tiger three, five, six days a week. He is 80. I think he's about 82 now. 82. He witnessed Tiger Claw because he was out there hiking and he had nothing but amazing things to say. He's the kindest old gentleman that crushes that mountain. So your 89 year old quads might be able to do it. Let's not cut them. Let's <laughs> cut them some slack. Perhaps hers. My, uh, my quads, uh, might, might still not be ready next May. Um, but then, you know, even, so even if you weren't there, um, we want to say that like that love is like all around us and it's so cool and so exciting. And even if you don't feel it day to day, even if every day isn't your tiger claw, as much as we can to take that out and express it to people around us. Like, you know, I always like to end these with my little, you know, after school message or whatever. And, and that's what it is today. It's like being out of Tiger Claw, you're so full of love. Like and for the community, for what this, what our bodies can do, whether we're running or not. And um, that is always there, even on those terrible Mondays or whatever. Um, and the more we can just bottle it up and like let it go, and, and tell people what they want to hear and not uh, just withhold things because that's the cool thing to do. Uh, the more life can be like Tiger Claw. And if life can be like Tiger Claw, that is the most special shit on earth. And so let's do it. Let's share that love. Big fans um, of you both. And again, thank you for making the trip out. We can't wait to see you every year in any capacity, whether you want to run or just come out and wahoo like crazy. <laughs> Wahoo, Wahoo. Well, woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> and just eat Chipotle. Even if you guys just want to come out and eat Chipotle like the day before and, and fart all over our course, uh, you are more than welcome. Um, Open the fart joke floodgate. <laughs> That's the sense you want to end this. <laughs> uh, before we move into our after show with David and Megan Roach, we do again want to recognize uh, those who we had a couple of rewards that we also gave out at the race. Yeah, so the other thing that we want to make special at Tiger Claw, as someone who has personally finished last in a race before, um, we wanted to make sure we celebrated everyone from the very front of the pack to the very end of the pack, which means like no tearing down anything earlier until the very last person finishes. Um, so this year we had an award called the Heart of the, the Tiger, which was the exact middle pack runner of the middle of the number of starters that we had. So this year's heart of the tiger was uh, Ben Bet Betchen. I think it's Betchen. Betchen. Yeah. Um, and Ben got a gift certificate, I believe, yep. to Seven Hills uh, Run Shop. Yep. And then we also celebrate the tail of the tiger, and we did this year one as well. And the tail of the tiger uh, got a very awesome uh, trophy that we loved. And the tail of the tiger this year was Peter Beeson. And Peter was out there for a long time. He was out there for almost 10 hours, I believe, and um, came through the finish line with like Cracking smile jokes on his face, and smiling and basically doing stand up as he came through the it finish was line. Really great. And there were so many runners out there who commented that they had met Peter out there and how positive he was the entire time. So congratulations to both our heart and tail of the tiger. Uh, all the first to top uh, runners as well as our podium. And David is holding up. Show, show, look at these things. <laughs> they are so cool. Like, what are, these are, I mean, we were just pumped. Rawr. <laughs> we love you all. <laughs> Including, especially Peter. Peter seems great. That was uh, Tiger, by the way. <laughs> they, they, I'm, so, I'm so surprised you were able to get them through uh, TSA. And did everyone give you any crap, or was it like just curiosity? No, I got, actually. I got a couple questions from the the like curious questions, um, and it was, it was actually really exciting. I, I feel like uh, on the way back we're gonna, I don't know, need to make some make it look more suspicious because I really just want them to inspect this and tell us. No, that's not a bomb. It's the coolest thing of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bomb trophy. 
<laughs> uh, we'll just have to have you guys travel with those as much as possible. Like even like months from now, well after uh, everything has died down. Um, that, well, thank you guys so much for coming to the race, for racing the race, for winning the race, for giving so much love and for joining us tonight. We appreciate you both. And uh, we'll give you a second because I know that you also have plenty to promote from the Swap pad Podcast and beyond. So where can people find, follow, and catch up with you guys beyond tonight's episode? Where can they find David and Megan Roach on the regular? The Work All Play podcast. Um, other than that, we have nothing to say, really. I would say <laughs> just at, increase your Patreon support to Ginger Runner if you can, even if it's just like 10 cents or whatever. I don't know how the Patreon works with that. A dollar would be great. Um, if you're not a if you're not a supporter, do it. It's the best. Like the the community supporting is the best. And uh, if I assume Tiger Call is happening, if it when it happens in the future, get out to the race. Like even if it's just to support. Like it. I. I mean, I'm almost speechless in how trying to describe the experience. Um, and I think you kind of need to be there to understand what we're talking about. Like it is the thing I will always remember about my running journey. Um, being out there, feeling that love. And also like feeling the terrible cramps at the end of the race. I might cramp up. I 100% echo that. We have to prepare our quads. We have a year to prepare our quads for the next soccer call. And do it. Um, actually, yeah. actually no, it's in May. It's in May. You have about six months. So better get started. <laughs> we can do it. I'm just, I, I am already, uh, I'm already like, spasming down here at the very top. Um, that's the massage the robot oh gosh give me the robot like you know necessity <laughs> is the mother of invention and uh this this i really there needs to be something going on down here right now because what i is not working alexa uh please do something <laughs> down there um our guest tonight david and megan roach the two uh kindest well, some of our favorite humans on planet earth we are so honored to know them and to have them join us this last weekend and look at that giant trophy <laughs> they've got two of them they got to carry around with them um for the next six months until the next tiger claw uh then i'm going to wrap up our main show tonight ginger Runner live episode 372 we are going to move right into our after show we have a little bit of uh, additional questions from the main show here and additional questions from our discord server and the like so we'll uh, be joined with david and megan there if you would like to join us in our after show, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. Uh, all tiers get access to our after shows. And then uh, $5 and above get access to our daily live streams where we bring the crew together. We talk about running life, um, everything in between. And GR crew member of the week, a new, seg a new, <laughs> a segment, new segment, a segment we've been doing now for, for years, years. <laughs> is our GR crew member of the week <laughs> where we like to recognize and shout out a member of the community who goes above and beyond. I can only imagine how many members of the community we have as GR crew members this week, but... Kim, you've narrowed it down. I just couldn't think of anyone though. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, this week's GR Crew Member of the Week, I just want to give a big, big, big shout out to all of the GR Crew members that showed up at Tiger Claw this week, who were willing to give up their entire weekend, who traveled to come volunteer, to come race. Um, just a huge, massive thank you and a massive shout out to all of you who were at Tiger Claw this weekend. Thank you. It could not have happened without you. Without a doubt. So thank you to the community, to the crew, and to everyone that was out there helping us. Um, we can't wait for next year. We are going to not mention Tiger Claw for the next like three or four days. So and we then we're sleep. back in. And then we're right back into it. We already have ideas. I think I've already annoyed Kim with the, here's what we should do next. I'm and like, it's... I need to clean the pickles and peanut butter off the cutting boards first. Yeah, but <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, so expect May of 2022, and uh, we cannot wait to see you all out there grinding up Tiger Mountain. Thanks all for joining us tonight. We'll see you in the after show. Train hard, race harder, be part of the hardest. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Ginger.